Get wisdom, get understanding. Don't forsake wisdom. For number one, wisdom will preserve thee. Preserve thee. The word preserve there means... will provide guidelines. Wisdom will show you how to behave. And later on in the book of Proverbs, we're going to deal with uh, the dangers of adultery. Wisdom will tell you to stay away from adulterous relationship because it tells you that adultery will destroy your soul. It will put a mark on your life that will never, ever leave you. Not ever. It remains there forever. And wisdom will preserve you. Wisdom will give you an opportunity, an option to stay away from those kinds of heinous uh, uh, activities and behaviors. I met a fascinating lady a couple of weeks ago. She's from the UK, South African uh, born, and has an initiative to reach women that are commercial sex workers and trying to offer a better life for them. But some of the stats she gave me uh, in a brief conversation a couple of weeks ago, uh, I wasn't aware of, kind of shook me to the core, and said that commercial sex workers are now as young as 10 years old. 12, 10, and 12 years old. And their mothers are putting them in that trade. Why would a mother do that? Why would a father pump his kids? So there's an absolute need for wisdom. I need you to put your hand on somebody's shoulder and say, Father, give my neighbor wisdom. <laughs> wisdom will preserve you. Wisdom will give you the kind of sense how to live your life. There's street wisdom and there's academic classroom wisdom. We need both. A lot of times as parents, uh, we, we protect our children. We, we try to insulate them from the world. And a lot of times our kids are not really street wise. And uh, sometimes they pay the price for not being street wise. But if you're just street wise and you don't have some academic knowledge, you can squander all of your, your revenues you make on just eating at the La Fontaine every day and lose all your money. So you're going to need both. I was sharing with the first service, I believe, uh, Bishop George Bloomer, that I had the wonderful occasion of meeting some years ago, is in Durham, North Carolina. Bishop Bloomer told me, he said, you know, Tudor, he said, I was fr I'm from Jamaica. Went to New York City in my early teens. And he said, I lived in the street, became a drug dealer, selling drugs. And he said, the kinds of things I learned in the street, I now use some of those principles because principles are principles in conducting and running our ministry. He said, in the street, when we were selling drugs, he said, Thursdays was product. They brought the drugs. Sunday was money. He said, if you don't bring money on Sunday, if you try to bring product back, they either break your knees or your life gets taken care of. Or somebody in your family is killed. And of course, George Bloomer, streetwise, he was trying to get me a book deal to write our first book. And he was using street wisdom. You're going to need both to survive in this world. You're going to need academic knowledge. You've got to go back to school and stay there. But you'd also better be streetwise because you're dealing with some real sharks. Some individuals that, that I can see even in this service... You're swimming in a world of big sharks, and just because you were nice-sized tilapia, you think you're a big fish. You're not a big fish in a world of sharks. That shark's going to swallow you whole. And so you're going to need some street-wise. You're going to need some wisdom from God to help you. If you'll embrace wisdom, wisdom will preserve you. Number two, wisdom will keep you. Wisdom will keep you. That's a protection word. It'll build a shield around you. Build a shield around you. How many wives in the room? If you are a wife, raise your hand. Wives, raise your hand high. 
Wives have this wonderful gift from God, which is they can see a fool that's trying to con your husband and your husband can't see that. Just look at your husband and say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's somehow when, when this guy, man, somebody walks into your house with your husband, it's like the wife, all of the hair on your head is like antennas. It's like pockets hail. The husband can't see it. Is that a husband changing seats already? <laughs> and what it is, is that it's a keeping force. It's intuition. It's an intuitive quality that God has given. And so when wisdom keeps you, wisdom will keep you from the shark. I know of a young lady that's very close to our lives that her life was almost destroyed. Because there were two, uh, four or five guys sitting at a bar throwing back some drinks. And one of the guys said, I bet you I can get the preacher's daughter. I bet you I can get the preacher's daughter and took a bet. Took a bet. Friday, Sunday, the guy went to church. Walked to the front. Said he got saved. Started befriending the family. Started dating the preacher's daughter. Married the preacher's daughter. And after the marriage, she discovered he was a drug dealer. Almost destroyed her life. Almost destroyed her life. Wisdom will keep you. Wisdom will cause all kinds of red lights to flash before you. And when a red light starts flashing in your head, don't overrule it. It's flashing for a reason. Mr. Slick Hair, Miss Cutie Pie, isn't everything they saying, wisdom will keep you. The red light, the red flag is there for a reason. It's there for a reason. I don't have time to spend with many people, but when we put people to lead, sometimes when people are leading on a Wednesday or on a, on a Sunday, and I'm standing there, and a red flag is waving in my head as the pastor of the church, wisdom is telling me something. I do not override that flag. Say, wisdom will keep me. Say, some, tell somebody, say, the red flag in your head is for a reason. The red flag in your head is for a reason. Number three, wisdom will promote you. If you exalt wisdom, wisdom will promote you. The Bible says a man in Proverbs, the man that seeks promotion will fall. But a man that seeks wisdom, wisdom will promote you. If you will seek wisdom, you will be promoted. In any category. In any category. I think it was Dr. Danza that was sharing with us a couple of years ago. Was it Hopkins Hospital where a world-renowned gynecologist, world-renowned gynecologist, world-renowned gynecologist was taking video of his female clients with a hidden camera and selling those videos to make money and violated hundreds of women. And a student picked it up. Now, why would a world-renowned gynecologist at a world-renowned center do something so stupid? Brilliant man. Obviously, no wisdom. Obviously, no wisdom. Why would a man molest his daughter? Obviously, no wisdom. Obviously, no wisdom. Satan is a brilliant being. A highly skilled, created being. Satan has no wisdom. He has intellectual knowledge, but no wisdom. Next week, my subject is, or the week after, is where does wisdom begin? The beginning of wisdom. 
The Bible says the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. So, so if God has wisdom, where did God begin? With self-respect. God respects himself. God honors himself. That's why he's wise. God will not violate himself. And so wisdom, sisters and brothers, number three. If you exalt it, it will promote you.